name is Anish. I'm in ninth grade and I've been playing saxophone for five years. My name is Julius Tolentino. I'm a saxophonist and educator. I've been playing the saxophone for 33 years. Anish, how did you get started on the saxophone? Well, my musical journey began at the age of four on the piano. And in elementary school, my teacher introduced me to the saxophone. Uh, the reason I was so interested in playing the saxophone is because of the loud, powerful sound it produced and how it um, spread across the room so evenly and so powerfully. And I was really attracted to it because of that. Awesome. Yeah, similar for me, I, I got to start piano lessons when I was pretty young, first grade. But I always wanted to play the saxophone. Started on clarinet in about fourth grade and switched to saxophone about your age, 13, 14. What have been um, some of your musical influences, Anish? I would say I have a long, pretty long list of musical influences, but if I were to narrow them down to a few of my favorites, probably include Charlie Parker, uh, Sonny Stitt, Dexter Gordon, Sonny Rollins, and others. But the reason these people, these specific players have had such a profound impact on my playing, probably because of the fluidity in their improvising, um, you know, how, how fluently they speak the jazz language. And Bird, obviously, he invented bebop, so he has a pretty big impact on my playing. He changed jazz forever. What about you? Well, I've been lucky to have some amazing uh, teachers throughout my, you know, formidable years, about the same age as you. I had some great public school teachers, but um, one of my biggest influences when I got to college, I got to study with a jazz great named Jackie McLean, who was actually a protege of Charlie Parker. And um, not only was I inspired by his playing, but just as a person, you know, he was a great educator and he really inspired me to become a jazz educator as well. So I was very fortunate to teach by, side by side with him a little bit in his summer camp and got to learn from him and um, he helped me kind of start my career in New York by uh, calling another great saxophonist by the name of Illinois Jaquette, who was also a big uh, influence on my playing as well. What direct influence have your mentors, mentors, Illinois Jaquette and Jackie McLean directly had on you? How have they impacted your playing? Right. Well, obviously their sounds, you know, both of those gentlemen had some of the most incredible sounds on the instrument ever made. You know what I mean? And they had like very personal sounds. I remember hearing Jack McLean first day of, of class and I just was in awe of how big and how strong his sound was. And I, I played with Illinois towards the end of his career and his sound was so pure and beautiful, you know? Um, so in that way, they really, really influenced just the way I hear music. Um, but as, as, as people and as educators, I really, you know, I'm trying to honor them by teaching the way I think they wanted music to be taught because that's the way they taught me. And that's kind of talking about the language of the music, and having students really deal with the recordings. And um, so they're huge influences on me and, and still are. And I hope they are uh, happy with what we're doing with jazz education right now. What have been some of your biggest challenges, Anish? Well, for one, I would say seeing myself next to musicians more musically developed than me and continuing to pursue my passion of jazz. Um, I would definitely say that, that it's been a challenge to see them better and still continue to, you know, uh, continue to follow what I like to do best and never give up on that. Mm. What about you? Well, that's, I think all, we all struggle with that, right? being around musicians that are just amazing. And um, I think I, I felt a lot of that when I first got to music school and um, realizing how talented some of the musicians were that were my age uh, or even younger. So that was really like an eye opener. You know, you come from your, your own town and, and you know, you're the, the, you know, one of the better saxophone players and you, you, you get to a, a bigger location or, uh, you know, a rich scene and everybody can really play. So that's, that's something I think we all deal with as musicians and it's good for us to be, you know, pushed and um, inspired, you know, by musicians our age and, and older musicians. I think, um, 
you know, I really had to make that decision when I was younger, realizing, wow, I need to put a lot of work to kind of reach that level that I want to attain. So there was definitely a, a you know, a point in my life where I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm really going to grind it out and do this, you know, and it's still, I'm still grinding it out. You know, I mean, you never stop growing, but you know, when you're younger, you feel like, you know, wow, like, how are these guys doing this? And, you know, am I going to be able to, to hang with them? But, you know, hard work definitely beats, beats talent, you know, no matter how talented somebody is, if, if there's a harder worker, you're going to, you're going to get to where you need to get to. Anish, do you have any um, favorite musical moments or experiences? Yeah, definitely multiple. Um, I would say in middle school, our wind ensemble went on a trip to Hershey Park as part of a competition, nice. music in the parks. And I, I over, I, like the entire day, I had a lot of fun. I didn't worry about anything else, you know? Right. So I kind of learned that, you know, music can be, you can hang out with some of your friends who are also musically talented and have fun and forget about everything else. That's awesome. As a teacher, I've been to music in the parks too. That is a fun trip, except I don't like rides. <laughs> um, I would say for me, some, some memorable experiences. Um, probably the first time I ever went on the road with a band, and that was with Illinois Jaquette's big band. I was by far the youngest member of the band by many years. And it was the first time being on the road and away from my fiance at the time. And, um, you know, you learn a lot from being around older musicians and taking a trip musically, you know? I was out for a couple of weeks and I had to pack a bag and, uh, you know, find a place to practice besides the hotel room and, you know, just how to, you know, make a lobby call, all those kind of things. I, I learned on that first trip. It was definitely a memorable experience, something I'll never forget. Anish, what are you uh, looking forward to in music? Well, for one, I'm definitely uh, looking forward to COVID, COVID the situation getting better uh, so I can get together and make music again mm -hmm. like we used to pre-pandemic. But I feel like I'm, I'm hoping to eventually, you know, keep improving, keep practicing, staying determined. Um, and I feel like I practice a lot more than I did before COVID and I learned a lot out of it as a musician. Right. That's what about awesome. you? Oh, pretty much the same, man. I can't wait to kind of get back to playing more. It's just starting to happen again. And um, having regular rehearsals with my students that I'm really looking forward to. We had some fun this summer and uh, I, I can't wait for the school year to start. But um, definitely, you know, like I said before, we, we're still growing on these instruments. So I'm, I'm looking forward to making music and just being inspired to keep practicing. Um, but yeah, getting in front of my students again is, is something I can't wait to do. What are some pieces of advice you would give me in order to become a better musician? Well, Anish, you're playing already at a very high level. Um, one thing I try to get all my students to understand um, is to eventually become your own best teacher. Um, and you already have really great ears and you're very aware of a lot of you know, things musically. And you already have this concept of how we learn this music jazz. You're transcribing, you're listening to the right players. Um, you've got a great sound, you know. So going back to being your own best teacher, a tool that would really help is recording yourself. You know, go to jam sessions. You know, keep going to jam sessions. I've seen you at a jam session already. So go to a jam session and, and bring a recording device and, um, you know, listen back to yourself from the audience perspective. That's going to help. That's going to show you everything. You know what I mean? And always try to... Compare yourself to, you know, what that sound is in your, in your head, you know, and have a sound in your head. So you said you love Charlie Parker and Sonny Stitt, you know what I mean? You might want to go through a phase where you're really trying to emulate th those players, you know. So you're recording yourself, listening to Sonny Stitt and say, hey, okay, why, why do I not sound like Sonny Stitt or how do I sound like Sonny Stitt, you know? So that is one of the, the greatest things that you can do for yourself is to really be meticulous about listening to yourself and trying to, you know, figure out how you're gonna be on that level. You know, we'll never really get to Sonny Stitt and Charlie Parker, they're some of the greatest, but you know, it's 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 really about that journey of 
trying to, to, to be that, you know, be that free on your instrument.